Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to show you how I do my makeup for an average Friday night performance. Something like this. Um, I'm going to go through just really basic, uh, step by step, just show you what I do, talk a little bit about it. I hope it helps. I want to do some more in-depth makeup tutorials with different kinds of looks and different types of makeup you might need for a photo shoot or for on a big stage. Like This is fairly dramatic because I really feel like as a belly dancer you're still supposed to look like really exotic and really glamorous even at an up-close venue. But when you're on a big stage, it's like the same thing but just magnified. Double lashes, lots of different tricks and stuff. So I'm going to show you some of my favorite tips and tricks. And then also look out, um, I'll show you how I did my hair as well. This is no heat, you guys. This is all done with rag curls. I've been experimenting with that for a long time, and it works really, really well for me. Granted, my hair is naturally curly, so it kind of probably holds it better. But, um, so keep an eye out for that, let me know what kind of look you'd like to see, and let's get started. So a trick I use is I like to listen to my set music for the night while I do my hair and makeup. And here I'm asking myself, did I already use my anti-redness eye drops? Uh, yeah, I think I did. So I've already got my moisturizer and all that on, and here I'm applying the Professional Primer. Uh, this is really great for getting into any old acne scars and, of course, deeper pores. So I'm applying that to just the areas where I have that problem, right around my nose, a little spot on my forehead, and top of my cupid's bow. Um, so the anti-redness eye drops I actually will use before my moisturizer to kind of counteract any redness from scrubbing or removing existing makeup because my skin is super, super sensitive. So that's actually a great tip if you want to try that out. It works extremely well. Um, so yeah, just getting that on any excess, I just kind of gently and lightly apply it to the rest of my skin. Um, don't put it on too heavy or your makeup will kind of glide off. So I always start on my eyes first because any fallout that you have or any touching of your face that you need to do while you're doing your eye makeup is not going to ruin all of the hard work that you put into your face makeup. Just adjusting my angle there. So what I start with generally is uh, just rimming the waterline lightly with the black eye pencil and then I'm going to go in with a bronzy eyeshadow. Um, I'm just using the Urban Decay Blush Naked Palette right now, or the Rose Gold Palette. Um, I'm not sure which eyeshadow I use. I usually mix them. They're really beautiful, gorgeous shades, though. But I just really slap this onto my eyelid because everything else is going to get blended out. Part of the weird blinking, too, my contacts are super, super dry. So anyway, now I'm going in with a big, fluffy crease brush and applying a dark brown color. And you can see some of that fallout I was talking about. See how I'm not even worried about that because I know I'm going to fix it later. So I just gently blend that up and out. And I like to kind of pull the corners up at the ends towards my, uh, my eyebrow. So you can see, when I'm looking down, you can really see the shape of that. And I've been doing this for so long that I don't really take that long. I just slap it in there. Okay, so here we're doing a white eyeshadow. Oh, I'm sorry, first I put the champagne color. So I put the, this is actually a MAC highlighter. I love it so much. It smells like vanilla. I love it. And I'm going in and I'm putting that all over my entire brow bone area and into the corner of my eye a little bit. And I like it because it's shimmery and it's light, but it's not overbearing. And we're done with that. And then we're going to go in with the bright white. That's actually a wet and wild color. And I go into the highest point on my brows. All right, just blending that in a little bit and I always kind of blend it right into the crease a little bit. Now I'm taking a cleaner fluffy brush and I'm just going to kind of meld those two colors together. You really can't blend too much honestly. And I kind of pull it in a little bit, pull it down around the edges of the corners of my eyes just a little bit. And my cat is trying to eat my apples and peanut butter while I'm recording this. Why is she doing that? She's so weird. But anyway, look how easy it is to fix 
any of that fallout. You just wipe it right off. You can use your fingers, a tissue, whatever. I'm running low on Q-tips. That's what I normally use, but that's why I th think how I use my fingers. So then I'm taking this really small crease brush. I love it so much. It's like a little detail brush. And I'm going to go in with a black color. It's really pretty. It's a NYX color. It's black with gold sparkles in it. Really super nice. And I'm just kind of putting that exactly where I need the crease to be more dramatic and a little bit deeper. And this is going to give dimension and depth to the makeup. Look how much different that looks. And just really packing that in, blending it, but not too much. With that dark color, if you blend it too much, you just turn into raccoon eyes, I find. So I just gently, gently blend it into the brown color. And then I like to bring it down a little bit. With this brush, is nice because it doesn't get everywhere. It just goes right where you need it. And then going into blending just a little bit. Just notice how light that hand is applying that. All the way around. And then you gotta blink like a weirdo. And I always like look straight into the mirror to check for symmetry. And then, yeah, looking at it, okay, all right, all right, that's looking good. Now I'm getting my brush wet, and I'm lightly getting the eyelid damp, and I'm going to go over, this is why I didn't obsess over applying my lid color, because I just, you can't even see the original color. So this is a shimmer, I think this is a NYX shimmer as well, and champagne, and it's just a roll-on shimmer, I think it was like $3, I love it, and it's lasted forever. That's what I really love about NYX's products. They are super affordable and super pigmented, so they are awesome. So I'm just patting that in and blinking so much. And then we're gonna do the other side. The other side gave me trouble because sometimes the roller ball gets kind of stuck. So I just kind of improvised a little bit, tried rubbing harder, that didn't work. Blink a lot because I messed up my contacts, so yeah. Now I'm just gonna put it on my finger because it's not coming out and then I'm going to pat it onto the eyelid. Ta-da! There we go. Problem solved. And just blending it in, I just pat it to blend. Nothing too crazy. There we go. Feeling satisfied with that. Oh, nope, not satisfied. Got to blend it some more. There we go. Does that look different? Oh, yeah. And I just Groove into the music there. Okay, so obviously next is liquid eyeliner. Forgive the hand in front of the camera. So I got some cheap eyeliner and the formula's fine, but the brush sucks. So I'm taking a, the brush from the more expensive eyeliner and I'm just dipping it into the cheap stuff. Pro tip. And what I do is I just basically, once again, I just slap some onto my eyelid, starting from the inner corner towards the outer corner and just starting thin and working it as I go. And then what I do is I make a little dot where I think that the tail should go and if that looks good then I connect it inward. And the benefit of doing that is that you keep your point sharp and you kind of avoid having to do that thing where you just keep making the wing longer and longer and longer and thicker and thicker <laughs> until it looks right. So it's a little easier to just connect it back to that line and then connect it to the bottom corner. And I had to let that dry a little bit. And then so here's the other corner. And getting distracted by the music, that was a drum solo. I was getting really, really excited to dance. Being a weirdo, don't mind me. Okay, so I guess we're done with the eyeliner. I'm looking at it. Does it look okay? Does it look good? Nope. I've got to fix it some more. But I do, oh, there we go. I do always like to get the corner to come down to my bottom eyelashes. So here's another tip. Um, if your mascara starts to dry out, you can add a few drops of rosehip oil and or a few drops of lubricant eye drops or even contact lens fluid. Contact lens fluid actually works really well and it's always going to be sterile. So it's not like water. Never mix water into your mascara because you can get it um, contaminated and you can get an eye infection. So this is pretty straightforward. It's mascara. There's no great trick other than that. I just put on my mascara. And I was trying so hard in this video to not make stupid faces, but I think normally when I'm putting on my mascara especially, I make the most ridiculous faces. Am I the only one? You can make that like 
Oh, like surprised, shocked face. It actually does seem to help, but I was trying really hard here not to do that because I was like, don't look like a weirdo. You were already blinking a lot. Just don't do it. So yeah, so just applying the mascara. I don't like to wiggle my brush a lot. I feel like it makes the clumps worse. So I just mostly stroke it upward. I really want to make sure I get the whole lash. There we go. Going into the corner a little bit. Um, one thing I've been using that is just phenomenal is eyelash serum. Oh my gosh. I just started using it. It's already started working. Um, my good friend just said, let me borrow some uh, to try. Oh my gosh. It is just, it is a game changer. I know you can't really see my individual eyelashes in this um, because it's too far away, but let me tell you, I've already seen results. So yeah, using an eyelash serum and then popping some mascara on. Honestly, don't even need to wear false lashes sometimes, although generally I'm a stickler about that. Just wear them anyway, even if you don't think you need to. Okay, so I just decided to skip ahead because apparently I spend a really long time putting on mascara. <laughs> Never really noticed that before, but when you sit and you watch yourself, you notice things that you don't notice when you're just being around yourself. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going in with just a little bit more of that dark eyeshadow and applying it basically between my eyelashes on the bottom. I'm literally just patting this on top of my eyelashes and then it's falling between them. So this skin avoids having those little gaps between each little baby eyelash on the bottom that you can sometimes get when you apply eyeshadow or, okay, I'm being a weirdo again, <laughs> eyeshadow or eyeliner to the bottom rim. So here I have brushed my eyebrow hairs upward with a spoolie and this is just what I do every day because my eyebrow hairs grow really fast so any that stick up I just snip them really fast and then I'm fixing them again but I'm gonna take the I think this is Maybelline brow tattoo it does not stay on for two days as it says that it does but I do like it because it gives the eyebrows a lot of definition and it gives them um, a little bit of volume as well so I just kind of gently go in, and I always wipe off the brush a little bit first, but I very, very gently go in. See the difference? Uh-huh. And I'm still not done. We're going to go in and we're going to fix them even more. But for now, you can see, oh my gosh, putting on, doing your eyebrows makes a huge difference. Oh my gosh, I already feel, even though I haven't done my face yet, I feel like, oh, I look like a person now. So then I'm taking a dark brown eyeliner, and it, I mean, it literally is just eyeliner. It's nothing special. I bought it by accident and wanted black eyeliner, and then I thought, oh, well, this looks good on my brows. I'll just use it for that. So I go in, and this allows me to kind of draw individual hairs, clean up the point of the eyebrow, go in and fix little things, all that kind of jazz. And it really does make a difference, especially in person when you're looking at the the brows, they kind of, if the eyes are the windows to the soul, then your eyelashes and your eyebrows are definitely the curtains and the valences to your soul. And we're going to go in and we're going to take forever on this, so I think I'm going to skip ahead again. Oh, what brush am I going for? Oh, there we go, this one. So here I am just taking the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. And I really do love this for stage. If you need a nice formula that stays on and stays matte, this is a great product. It's pretty expensive. It's like 40 bucks, but it lasts a long time, so I think it's worth it. I definitely only wear it for performance uh, for the most part because it is really heavy and my skin is sensitive and breakout prone, so it does uh, tend to make me break out if I wear it for an extended period of time. So here I'm going to go in with a stippling brush and go ahead and blend that in. And I really love this brush. It's just one that I got at Walmart. Uh, it's like a retractable stippling brush and it never gives me any streaks and it blends it perfectly. I haven't been able to find any other brush that works as well, so I'm never, ever, ever getting rid of this one. <laughs> um, yeah, I like to just gently, gently blend that in. You want to make sure you're pressing it into your foundation, but you're not pushing or pressing it into your skin but not um, just mashing it around there's kind of a, a light hand that uh, the light hand works better for this and we're gonna blend forever and blink because contacts suck 
Then we're going to go in with a little bit more on the inner corner. This particular shade works, kind of doubles as a concealer for me, but if you need a different shade of concealer, this is where you would go in and apply it. Make sure you blend it downward or you're going to look like you've got concealer on. And then I always take it in right through the inner corner. This also helps me, um, again, I feel like... Uh, I feel like it helps me make my eyes look a little farther apart. I don't think they're too close together. I just think that on stage it looks nicer when you have kind of a very open face, very open eyes, everything, yeah, just helps. So that really kind of sets them apart. Oh, I get it. It sets them apart. <laughs> oh, I'm so funny. Anyways, going in still, <laughs> stipple, stipple, stipple. And I'm just blending that outward just a little bit because we're going to go in with this second color here. And this is Maybelline Dream BB Foundation or something like that. And I'm mixing in just a little bit of the other color as well. The Dream BB Concealer or Foundation or whatever is really nice because it's super lightweight. I wear it a lot in the summer. It also has salicylic acid in it, so that helps me a lot because I have uh, KP, so my skin does not exfoliate at the rate that it should. So I load up on those exfoliants to keep my skin from breaking out. I'm going to get a little bit more. See? Mix them together. Look how different those two shades are, by the way. That's what you want for, con uh, for contouring. And we're just going to go in and we're going to add that in. And I'm basically just blending it down my neck. You never want to stop on your face or you're going to get that mask look. So here I've just taken loose powder and I've put it into a compact just to make it easier to blend. No rhyme or reason here, just going to gently pat that on. I do like to pat versus sweep because otherwise we're going to mess up all the effort we just put into our foundation. You know though, I love this brush I'm using. This is IT Cosmetics Powder Brush. Oh my gosh, if you have an Ulta, you should go in and just touch this brush. Just go and pet all the brushes because they're so, so soft. Again, expensive, I feel like it's worth it. Some products, I get super cheap. Like eyeliner, that eyeliner I got was like a dollar. The foundation, I always get expensive foundation, um, expensive brushes. And this is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Redness, and I'm just using this to go into the contour a little bit. It's just enough to not be overpowering, just a little darker. So I actually apply my contour a little differently than most people because I contour my cheek and jawbone together rather than trying to make a big stripe down the center of my cheek. I already have fairly prominent cheekbones, but I also have a fairly wide jawline, I feel like. So when I do that, I feel like I am narrowing my jawline a little bit, which is considered to be more feminine. Um, and I usually, even though I did contour my forehead a little bit here, I usually don't. I'm, Kind of just depends on how I'm feeling that day, but sometimes I leave my forehead uncontoured and I contour my jawline because it's going to make my face a little narrower. So anyway, so here's blush. Fairly simple. It's just a NYX color. Um, couldn't tell you what it is anymore. All my makeup gets so beat up that I can't read the shade names or anything, so I apologize. But I feel like everyone's skin is different anyway, so you need to find colors that are good for you. But I love this. This is really pretty. It's just a nice flush of color. It doesn't look fake. It just looks really bright and makes you look happy and healthy. Then I'm taking a more uh, narrow brush and I'm just blending the edges of that in. There we go. Yeah, I, just, I look so much more alive. Look at that. Oh, I'm a person. Oh, yeah. Taking that contour back in a little bit underneath just to give a bit more definition and to help blend it because that color is really pigmented and it kind of just stopped. So, school glue. This is my secret weapon because I'm mildly allergic to latex glues. And I heard from a Cirque du Soleil performer that this is actually what they use for multiple shows per night because it is very gentle, it's washable, and it's non-toxic. And uh, Hitler stash. Yep, that, there you go. You needed that, didn't you? So what I do is I apply to both strips and I just hang on to it for a minute. You need to let your glue set. Think about it. If you're gluing something, if you're gluing paper, it's not dry right away, right? You gotta let it set. So I put it on and then I'm just gonna hold on to it while I put on my lip liner. And I always over draw my Cupid's bow just a little bit. Just a little, little tiny bit. My lips are already fairly full. If you have thinner lips, you might experiment with overlining or lip plumpers. 
Um, there's a plumping lip gloss I've used that works really well. Um, if you put it on towards the beginning of your makeup routine, it should take effect. And then you can also use the um, the ones that it's like something you put over your lips and you squeeze it and then it kind of suctions them out. Those actually work really well. They do work. Just don't overdo it. <laughs> don't make your lips look like two giant pillows because I think that looks stupid. To be perfectly honest, no offense to anybody who does get lip filler. If you do, more power to you. All right, so I fill in the whole lip with the lip liner because it is more um, has more staying power. I honestly should have let my eyelashes dry a little bit longer, but I felt like this video was getting really long, so I was like, well, we'll just go ahead and do it. So notice that I keep my eyes open while I apply my eyelashes. What you're doing here, you want your eyelashes to stay on your eyes when they're open, not when they're closed. Getting a little excess glue off there. So if you close your eyes and you put on your eyelashes and then you open them, pop, off they come. So two things to help that are to wiggle the lash bands around the first time you wear them and really break that um, band up a little bit so that they're soft and pliable. And once you wear them once and you get them on, they'll actually stay that shape. So the next time, and this is the second or third time I've worn these, the next time you put them on, you just plop them on. Then you just have to let it dry and you just kind of poke the edges every once in a while really gently just to make sure it stays on. That's really the trick. Part of it is eye reflex. Since I wear contact lenses, I don't really have much of a blink reflex. So, yeah, what am I doing? I just pointed at something. I don't know what I was doing. I guess I was indicating to myself, hey self, I'm going to put on more lip liner. Be sure to talk about that. And check in on those corners again. And then here we go with the lip color. So this is just slightly brighter and I use it to create a bit of dimension. I very rarely use just one lip color because I want to make my lips look 3D and pouty and purty. See, that makes a little difference. You can't see a whole lot on the camera, but it does make a difference. So I'm just going over the center. And this is nice. I actually didn't blot any of this because it is a matte formula, and it's um, one of the velvet mousse things, so it dries. It is really drying out the lips, but it uh, stays on for a show, so I really like that. And if you're using a color that is uh, satin or you know a soft finish, you do need to blot and set your lipstick. And here I'm just putting on just a little tiny bit more contour. I feel like that does look better. A little goes a long way, you know? Getting those eyelashes again. And again. They're such a pain in the butt. But there you go. That's basically it. There you have it guys, this is the finished look. Um, my eyelash on the side is still just drying a little tiny bit, but here I'm going to grab ya. Oh, that stupid eyelash, holy cow. Oh, my contacts are all dried out too, I need a new pair, but I just, you know, huh, gotta go make some money tonight first. But so anyway, so here is the final look. Um, this is really, really bright lights, so I'm going to turn them off for you as well, so you can whoa, kind of see in a little bit more normal light. So it's not quite as, like, cray-cray, but it's still nice and dramatic. This is probably a lot like the light at Azars, actually. So anyway, I hope that this was helpful. And uh, yeah, check out my channel, subscribe, check out my Patreon for more. Thanks for watching.